So you want time travel. Today I'm gonna to present four different ways to really time travel. Hi there, I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at four different ways to time travel. Yes, indeed, these are all real ways that would allow you to time travel. However, for some of them, you're gonna need some advanced equipment. There is one stipulation though with all of these approaches. They'll only allow you to go to the future. Time travel to the past might be possible with exotic matter or time loops, but we don't even know if these exist. So I'm sorry to disappoint, we're only gonna be talking about ways to time travel to the future. Time's a wasting, so let's get traveling. The first way to time travel to the future is the simplest way, just move. If you walk, run, cycle, skate, roll, you will indeed travel to the future. And here's how it works. The speed limit of the universe is the speed of light, which is roughly 300 million meters per second. And according to Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, when you travel at speeds close to the speed of light, you'll start to experience something called time dilation. In other words, the faster you move through space, the more that time slows down for you. And here's an example to explain it. I'm gonna consider the example of Mandy and Mindy. Now Mandy is gonna stay at home and she's gonna watch Netflix for the day while Mindy is gonna get on a bicycle and cycle for 400 kilometers. Importantly, they both have identical clocks with them at all times, and these clocks happen to be very accurate atomic clocks. Mindy returns after her cycle, and they decide to compare the clocks. So what do they find? They find that Mindy's clock is slightly slower than Mandy's clock because Mindy has been moving. Mindy wasn't moving very fast, of course, perhaps with an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour for that distance of 400 kilometers, but that still is enough for the atomic clock carried by Mindy to slow down by a very small amount. Given that Mindy's clock is slightly slower than Mandy's clock, this means that Mindy has actually traveled into the future by a very, very small amount. According to Mandy, who is at home watching Netflix all the time, time has passed as normal. But because Mindy has been moving at 40 kilometers per hour, the clock that she was carrying has ticked slightly slower than the same clock that Mandy had. All of this means that Mindy has figured out a way to travel into the future by a very small amount. And when I say that it's a very small amount, we're talking about a fraction of a nanosecond in the difference between Mandy's clock, which was at home, stationary and not moving, and the clock carried by Mindy when she was out for her 400 kilometer cycle. Right, the idea of going out for 400 kilometer cycles every time you want to time travel by a fraction of a nanosecond isn't very practical. So let's figure out if there's a faster way to do it. And there actually is. Earlier on I mentioned that when you travel close to the speed of light, you'll start to experience this effect known as time dilation. The example of Mandy and Mindy explored the idea of time dilation, where time slowed down ever so slightly for Mindy, who was cycling. Logically then, we should go off and find something that can allow us to travel very fast, perhaps at speeds that are close to the speed of light, and hopefully if we can do that, maybe we can experience time travel. Well, of course, we would experience time travel if we're moving, but by moving closer to the speed of light, we can time travel further into the future. To get to speeds that are close to the speed of light, we're gonna need, well, a rocket of some form or another, and then we need to get into space, and then we need to fly off into space. So what would happen if someone did have a rocket and was able to travel at a speed that's relatively close to the speed of light. Let's take a look at another example. Once again, I'm gonna use Mandy and Mindy in the example, and they both start out on Earth. Mandy will stay on Earth while Mindy leaves on a powerful rocket for a distant star. Both Mandy and Mindy have got atomic clocks, those really accurate clocks I mentioned earlier on, and they are going to carry identical clocks 
for the duration of this experiment. Mindy leaves for that distant star at a speed that is 80% the speed of light, or 0.8c. C here is used in physics to represent the speed of light, and it's very famously included in the equation E equals mc squared. Mindy is going to travel to a star which is 16 light years away from Earth. One light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. Let's take a closer look at Mandy. Mandy is stationary on Earth, so her velocity is zero. And according to Mandy, a round trip, that means flying off to that star and then coming back to Earth at a speed that is 80% the speed of light would take 40 years. But Mindy is moving. She experiences instant acceleration, which means that she goes from zero to 80% the speed of light almost instantaneously. This is just to simplify the calculation. And according to her, when she's traveling at 80% the speed of light, a round trip will take 24 years, according to the clock that she's carrying. Then Mindy returns to Earth, and Mandy and Mindy decide to compare their clocks, and this is what they will see. Mandy's clock will show that 40 years have passed, while Mindy's clock shows that it's actually 24 years later. With this very simple experiment involving a very powerful rocket traveling at 80% the speed of light, Mindy has traveled 16 years into the future. And that's how you can skip years with a very powerful rocket that can travel at a speed close to the speed of light. The takeaway here is all you need is a powerful rocket that can fly you across the vastness of space. But in summary, right now we don't have rockets that can travel at 80% the speed of light. Sorry to bring that piece of disappointing news in terms of your time traveling exploits. Method number three is also linked to the magical relativity world of Albert Einstein, and it involves flying off into space and finding large mass objects. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, when you bring a clock very close to a large mass, it will tick slower than when it's far away from the same mass. To explain this, let's consider another example. In this example, I'm going to consider the idea of satellites in orbit around the Earth. Let's imagine that we have placed identical atomic clocks on the satellites and also beside those trees that are back on Earth. We let the satellites orbit the Earth for a bit and then we check the clocks to see if there's any difference. When we do check the clocks, we'll find that the clocks on the satellites are ticking faster than the ones that are beside the trees back on Earth. And why? Because the clocks on Earth are closer to the large mass that is contained in the Earth. The difference between the clocks in the satellites and the clocks beside the trees on Earth won't be very big though, because the Earth, well, it's not very big in terms of its mass when you compare it to other objects in the universe. Therefore, in order to time travel to a greater extent, or to create a bigger difference in time between the clocks, we need to find large mass objects in space. These objects could be stars with very large masses, or even a black hole at the center of a galaxy. In the Christopher Nolan film Interstellar, a team of astronauts led by Matthew McConaughey experience extreme time dilation effects when they visit a planet which is very close to a supermassive black hole. They spend a little bit of time down there, a matter of hours, but while they spent those hours on the planet close to the supermassive black hole, more than 20 years passed for anyone who happened to be further away from that black hole. In other words, the astronauts that went to the planet ended up time traveling more than 20 years into the future in comparison to anyone who did not go to that planet. But like time traveling with very fast rockets, we need very fast rockets to be able to bring us to black holes so that we can go into orbit around the black hole and experience time dilation. Unfortunately, we don't have those rockets yet. We'll just have to wait for them. And the fourth way to time travel to the future 
involves freezing yourself. Yes, you heard that correctly. You gotta freeze yourself to time travel. The company Alcor are in the business of freezing people. Based in the US, they are the world leader in cryonics, which is the process of preserving human remains at very low temperature. You may be wondering then, how much does this whole process cost? Well, it costs over $200,000 and here's how it works. You will have contacted Alcor in advance of your death and said, hey, I wanna be frozen when I die and I want you to do it. When you die, Alcor will arrive to collect your body immediately. They'll then remove all of the blood from your body and replace it with cryoprotectants. The cryoprotectants are placed inside the body to prevent the formation of ice crystals because if ice forms, well, they can actually damage or pierce the cell membranes in your cells and permanently damage those cells. You don't want that to happen, particularly because you're hoping that you will be unfrozen in the future and brought back to life. And you're gonna need those cells in order to, well, be alive. So for example, if you gave Alcor permission to replace all the blood in your body with cryoprotectants and place you in a cryonics device for 50 years, and in 50 years time, Alcor figured out how to bring you back, well, you would time travel to the future by 50 years. There is one small issue with this whole process. It's just a tiny one, to be honest. We still do not know how to bring people back to life after they've been cryopreserved. Perhaps that's actually a big problem. I undersold it. In the world of superheroes, the supervillain organization Hydra figured out how to do all of this after the Second World War, particularly when it came to the deployment of a certain Bucky Barnes, also known as the Winter Soldier. Barnes was a character who was frozen and unfrozen by Hydra in order to carry out some dastardly deeds as an assassin. But why is Bucky Barnes' body not damaged by this repeated freezing and unfreezing of his body? Well, it comes down to one simple thing about his body. His body is making antifreeze proteins, and these proteins can protect against ice crystal damage during the freezing process. In the real world, these antifreeze proteins can actually be found inside the bodies of the ocean pout fish, which is a species that lives in the Arctic waters. And as you can imagine, if you're living in the Arctic, it's gonna be cold. And while researchers are working on ways to replicate these antifreeze proteins, nobody has figured out a way to free somebody using antifreeze proteins. And actually, that probably won't happen for some time. But the freezing option is there, of course, with Alcor, because they can use cryoprotectants to freeze you. But there is that small issue, of course, of the fact that we still don't know how to bring people back to life after they've been frozen. And there you have it. Four different ways to time travel to the future. Building rockets to travel close to the speed of light. Traveling on the same rockets to black holes and going into orbit around those black holes. And freezing people using technologies that we might have already or brand new technologies that we need could all allow you to travel to the future. But the one thing they have in common is the following. They all rely on technology that doesn't exist yet. So for the moment, you're just gonna have to rely on method number one, and that is the idea of just moving. So anytime you walk, anytime you cycle, anytime you run, just remember that you're not just moving you're also time traveling. And the great thing about this approach is that you don't need expensive rockets or giant freezers for time travel to happen. You may not go far into the future, but you are indeed time traveling. So, happy time traveling. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for more videos. Until I see you next time, always think super.